it's always um, how people perceive it. Like, um, is it is it fast enough for people? Um, and then then it's real time, I guess. Um, and so that's kind of the difference between the two things. Like, if it's slow, it's annoyingly slow. But if it's too fast, at least in the interface, it can also be super confusing. Like when you when you do things too fast and people can't follow, it can be you can't just follow, and um, that's also that, that leads to the period of confusion, which is then again perceived as slow because you 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 look around and uh, you don't find anything, and um, yeah, that's the slowness again. So essentially, it's mainly about slowness, so latency. Right. So um, one important point of that um, of the the slowness or of um, not being slow or not being perceived as slow is to actually give regular feedback and keep people in the flow. That's like a lot of the a lot of the problems, like backend problems, load time and stuff, can just be done uh, or can just be um, can just be fixed by um, simply giving regular feedback and letting people know what's up. So there's this um, there's this basic rule or this basic rule of thumb of uh, point one. Uh, seconds, 0.1 second, 1 second, and 10 seconds, and um, that's like um, the the like the three most important times in in interfaces. So, 0.1 second, like 100 milliseconds, is is perceived as blazingly fast, or not as blazingly fast, but like as instant. Okay, so that's that's human real time. If if it's if it's faster than 100 milliseconds, you're fine, or if the whole thing is faster than 100 milliseconds. So if it's one second, or or in the ballpark of one second, you at least need some kind of feedback. It will still uh, seem good to people, but it will not seem instantaneous. So you need some kind of feedback, some spinner, um, yeah, some some something that informs people that it's going to take just a bit. But then when you come to ten seconds, people are just going to go away um, because ten seconds is like, um, I mean. If you if you have a 10 second if you have a 10 second delay you need to give more information what actually happens when it's done um, maybe maybe yeah detail the steps or something um, or or let them know like you can return to this page later or something because like I don't know 10 seconds sounds not that long but uh, like I'm going to show you 10 seconds is really Right, so that should illustrate the point. Um, so what I really liked, for instance, um, or, or what is a good example for a long wait, which gives you not only feedback but also like fun thing to play with, is a conversation uh, done by the people of Enyet. Um, it gives you a little lunar lander to play with. Um, that's me exploding it. Um, but uh, it's really fun while you wait for other people to join your chat, which might take, I don't know, longer than 10 seconds, maybe a minute or something. So you don't even know you're waiting. It's like this, um, I mean, the concept of putting a game in the loading screen, um, it's, it's quite old, I think, but it's not used that much and not in that kind of a, uh, um, an unrelated way. Like, there are even games who let you play games while they're loading, I don't know. But I think there's even a company who patented it, so I don't know. Um, but yeah, that, that, was, that was fun, anyway. Um, Right. So um, another important point about the uh, um, about the time or about the things being perceived as sluggish or as or as fast is a transition because it's not always about it just being super fast like instant, but also uh, that, that's what I meant by it being too fast is when you show things too fast, then it can also be confusing. So here's a good example. Um, this is not; these are not my examples, by the way, or, or this uh, specific one. Uh, there was like just last week there was a, a blog post by an animator called Pascal da Silva, um, who um, wrote a blog post on transitional interfaces, and that like really summed up um, what I think about this topic. It's like this here, uh, like a list, and you put a new item in there, or there is a new item coming in, it just appears. It's super weird. That it just it just suddenly slips in, and you don't know anything like if you were looking at the at the other items below they just shift one down and you don't know what the hell happened so um, you need some kind of transition there so one example he gives is like the 
pop in animation and everything else slides down slowly. I mean, it's, it's really the kind of a real world metaphor. Like when, when I move here or something, I don't suddenly make, like, I can't even do this, right? I, can't, I, mean, I can't just teleport here, right? It's not possible. And I, I can't, like if I show you, I don't know, a piece of paper or something else, I can't just suddenly move my hand uh, 10 meters or not even 10 centimeters away. It's super confusing. So you shouldn't do that in interfaces. Um, yeah, second example is um, sliding in. It's just another example. I mean, you can also go heavily overboard with these animations. That's like a word of warning, and I hope you know that. Um, and um, yeah, but, but these are two kind of uh, subtle, interesting animations, which are also fast enough to not slow it down, but um, they're slow enough to not confuse you. And uh, that's very important um, when you when you add new stuff continuously, and also like um, when there's, um, like for instance, on Twitter um, or on other, I suppose, on other apps which pull in new messages or, or new updated content, it always stays uh, at the at your current scroll position and just puts the the updates up top, so it doesn't rip you out of your flow um, and rip you out of what you were reading. So that's also really important to not. Um, like push people around and and um, um, distract them from what they were currently doing. Yeah, so that's like one of the big points. Like, don't kill the user's flow. It's uh, because the the concentration of people on on the task is like the most important thing. Because I I firmly believe that software or essentially everything we're doing, if I if I could say that, is uh, to to cater to people, to cater to their work, and to let them do their work without. Have, having to or without annoying them, without them having to uh, fiddle with the software um, and uh, look at, I don't know, um, trying to find where the updates are and what just happened and, oh, I'm confused, and uh, yeah, then they'll just close the laptop and go away, go outside or something. So, um, right, <laughs> by the way, since you give me, gave me uh, the, the push notification um, um, permission, I, I can I can let you know like you have 76 new notifications. Um, I can even like everything has notifications now, right? So I better get better get some myself. So so I, I just have 76 notifications now for you. I, like I don't know what exactly it is. Like if it's important or um, if you should read them or I don't know. Like the number 76 has like no significant meaning. Like you could also have 24 notifications. Like in fact, that's a funny thing on iOS. The mail app, like the iOS mail app, shows me 76 notifications for my email, while the um, Google mail app shows me 24. So why is that? Because the Apple mail app counts mails, and the Google mail app counts conversations. I don't know, like, I don't care about either of those. Like, notifications, like, if it's anything other than none, it, I don't know, it, it seems kind of, it seems kind of strange to, like, the difference between the number 76 and the number, I don't know, 65 or something, seems to be so, so um, incredibly um, useless uh, that uh, I wonder why, why people bother with it at all. But yeah, anyway, I'm, I'm having notifications now. You can read them later if you tap me or something. So, um, and the, the, the weird thing is like every app wants to send you notifications now. So like for Mailbox or for a Mail app, it might make sense, but yeah, I, just said that it, it might also not make sense, but everything wants to send you push notifications now. That's why I asked at the beginning um, because I, you really need to make sure, like when you have an app, you want you want to get the permissions to send people push notifications, right? So if you're a game or if you I don't know if you're anything, and then they can go manage a notification center and then like waste their day managing notifications. Like that really really sucks. Okay, uh, so you should like put. A significant amount of thought into what notifications you want to send, and if you actually need to send them at all for your app. Um, right. So, and it's not yeah, it's not just iOS or something. It's uh, like everyone does it, and this is just like a few examples of like the popular ones. And there you see like the the numbers in red or or white numbers on red in red bubbles, um, and it's like stupid useless red bubbles that say nothing about the significance of the content and um, so there often there are um, uh, like uh, granular settings for for email notifications like what gets into your inbox 
like uh, only um, I know on Twitter, like just when your app mentioned or just when you get a direct message. I mean, of course, they add notifications all the time, and you automatically get subscribed to them. That's a different issue. Um, you also shouldn't do that, <laughs> but. Um, you don't have that granularity often for notifications in the interface. Like you can't say, "Hey, don't show me a damn red bubble," if I don't know someone I don't know mentions me because I don't want to. I'm not interested. Um, so there, are granular, more granular settings um, are good. But then also, the, the thinking about if you need them this at all, like this notification that you're doing a setting for, if you need that at all, if that is useful for people at all. Is a, is a very important thought as well. So yeah, I mean, they're not notifications. They're interruptifications, I think, um, because they interrupt you, they're distracting you, and they're just, like, they're just super annoying uh, most of the time. And the worst part is when, when sound also comes in. Um, yeah, I don't know. I heard a few beeps and blips there. And um, I actually wanted to make a, a notification soundboard so I can trip you up all the time like at different points in my talk, but I, I decided not to because I don't want to be mean. Um, but it's kind of interesting that when, like, something, when, especially when the default sound of a notification comes up, like, lots of people are like, well, and they think it's their device or it's something, like, everyone knows the, I don't know, the ICQ new message sound and the Skype call incoming sound, and we're all completely um, behavioristically, like, um, like Pavlov's dog. Uh, we're totally trained um, to, to, to be tripped up by it um, and wake up and uh, wanting to uh, compulsively check our devices. Oh, is there anything new? So um, yeah, we need to we need to really think about what we want to push out, what we need to push out to people, what is actually useful for them. So an example, like I was watching this uh, video or like just any random video on on the on the iOS device. It's just like I use this as an example because like a friend gave it to me last year and I thought like oh. Uh, I played around with iOS devices sometime, but I never had one myself for a longer time. Uh, so I thought it would be really fun, and also I, I expected it to be like user friendly and all that. Uh, right. So I was watching this video, and then like after a few minutes, I get this. Um, my storage is almost full. Like, interesting. I don't give a shit. I want to watch this video. Um, then a few minutes later, I get a little battery warning. <laughs> so here, the interesting, like the next interesting thing is 20%. Um, I don't know 20%. Like, what's the significant of, significance of 20%? It's just like with the 76 or something. It doesn't warn me at 10%. And the worst part is it doesn't warn me at 1%. It just shuts off, right? Um, I, I don't know how many times it just, it just died on me without letting me know directly in advance, like three minutes before, hey, dude, plug it in directly now or I will shut off. But it will warn me, like, I don't know, an hour in advance or something. Um, and will block whatever I'm doing, right? So, oh yeah, another one. Yeah, I forgot. It's, I'm not even making that up. That was in one viewing session, right? It's like I'm not even faking that. I was downloading something or trying to download something in in the background. Uh, just didn't work, probably because of the low, low disk space uh, that it said to me before. And um, yeah, I don't know. Um, but it doesn't interest me at this point. Like, just let me know later when I'm done watching the video or when I'm when I'm going into the main, street, main screen or when I'm, when I'm opening the notification panel. And so, yeah, Johnny Ive, here's what you need to do. Oh, you can't really see it, but so what's this? Um, the, the, the battery icon just shows in the bottom, uh, in the top right corner where, where it usually is, but it shows when it's, when it's in red state and it's just like a, a subtle indicator, hey, your battery's going down, like better charge it. And um, it's subtle enough that it's not annoying me, like I don't need to press a button to get rid of it, um, but it's, it's yeah, significant enough that I know, hey, my battery's going down, I'm better going to charge it, but I can also try to, I can also decide to ignore it, because it's just like a small icon in the corner. And uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't even think it's funny, but like I have another example, like I was playing this game, and it, it happened to me while, while playing other things too, like if you ever played Cannabalt or Super Hexagon, you know, like you can absolutely not be interrupted, and it's not funny. <laughs> so, um, it like I, I wanted to. Oh yeah, that I that I put my language on Spanish didn't really help. Like I'm I'm doing this so I learn Spanish, but like um, there are other errors coming also. But so anyway, I was 
I shortly before I wanted to install something uh, from the store, and then I don't know it didn't ask me for my password or whatever, and then I started the game, and I'm I already flew like it said it says 258 meters, so I'm already playing the game for like half a minute or something, and then it pops up this password screen. I mean it pauses the game, but it completely disrupts my flow, and then. So I type it in, I say, OK, yeah, come on. Uh, and then like a few hundred meters later, I get this, like something about photos in iCloud and streaming. And I'm like, oh, come on. Uh, and then at 1,159 meters, it, it again says to me, like, hey, your battery is at 20%. Um, and yeah, that was kind of interesting, because when I, when I clicked that, um, I just died. Right? So, um, it was super annoying. Uh, so it, it's kind of like this, right? It's the, these weird alert boxes. I really, I really thought we were out of that, out of that era where we just, um, yeah, throw an, an an alert to people, like like the JavaScript alert windows also. Um, but it's not like there's still things happening, like even on on platforms which are which which are said to be user friendly, like like iOS. Um, it probably also happens on Android. I hope it doesn't happen on Firefox OS. I really don't, because I ordered a Firefox OS phone this morning. They, they're already so loud, but um, I hope it, it implements the thing I mentioned earlier. Or maybe I can do it myself. That's the great thing. <laughs> so right. So the basic point is, oh, that's also my solution to the problem, or to the notification problem, at least. Do not disturb mode. Like Many phones have do not disturb mode, uh, and that's just the default mode I'm in. Um, but the problem is, like, I still get battery notifications. I would really love, like, it would not disturb me or differently disturb me about these things. And I think it's really important to come back to the flow thing again, to to not disturb people, to not disturb people if they're doing anything other than I don't know, being in the in the main screen or whatever. Uh, if they're if they're in a in an app, if they're writing something, like if the if the keyboard is out, if they're typing, if they're like I, ha I had the password dialog come on me while I was typing. Uh, I had the the um, I had two dialogs actually open one time, like one dialog over another. I don't even know how that happened, um, but it's um, it's really annoying and it's um, it's keeping me from doing what I actually got the thing I, I got the software to do, um, which is do some work and not uh, manage notifications. So. Um, how am I on time, by the way? OK, sweet. So uh, yeah, uh, be helpful uh, is uh, one of the big things. And I, I, I want to show you like, some patterns, how you can be more helpful, like just some quick examples. Um, we can also talk later about it more. Um, so, so one great thing that, that, for instance, Gmail does is um, when you delete a message, um, it gives you this undo function. Like you, maybe some of you are pro probably most most of you know that it's it's like a, a Gmail Lab function, and I think it's also in the in the mobile app. It's by default because how many times did you have that that feeling like when you deleted a thing and then just a split second later you were like, oh shit, I actually needed that thing, right? And you now you have to go back to the trash bin and recover and I don't know. It's just super annoying. So I just have this undo function for sending emails. How does that work, right? You just sent an email. Like how can I undo that shit? Uh, so they simply lie to you. They, they just don't send the email for five seconds or ten seconds, and during that time, which is, I mean, five seconds in sending email is not really like time critical. Um, so you can just during that time undo it, uh, and if you don't do anything or if you click on anything else, um, it will just send the message, um, and and the notification is really really um, non-distracting, right? So um, if you use Gmail and don't have that enabled, I really suggest you do that because it's super helpful. And um, it, it saved me from like several otherwise maybe weird things, situations. Yeah. So uh, right, we also do that in OnCloud like for file deletion or for several other things. Like always undo and never, do you really want to delete that thing? Like it cannot be, it cannot be reverted. <laughs> and then you say, oh, uh, you, 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 you always tap on the, like when when you when you get this um, this alert again, like do you really want to delete this? And then it says either OK or cancel, and you don't really know like what 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 this which right? And then you just press like one of the buttons because it's all it's all agreed to you. And then something strange happens, and you don't know what what actually 
what actually was supposed to happen, but you probably didn't want it. So uh, always offer undo and never do the model bullshit. Um, all right, so one thing, one, one another example of like helping and not getting in the way is like, so I hear uh, cute hedgehogs are all the rage now, like kittens are out and hedgehogs are the new thing. Um, so yeah, I talked to Phil about that. Um, so anyway, um, <laughs> I, I, I mistyped or something, right? I can't type correctly, but it automatically shows me the correct results and it's, it gives me feedback that it does that. It says showing results for cute hedgehogs, not hedgehogs, I don't know. Uh, but I could, I could also search, like if that was some kind of animal, I could also do that and, and say like search instead for that. Um, but it's really, I mean, it's, it's doing the right thing, so to say, like it's doing the helpful thing. It, it doesn't do it doesn't show me no results and say, no results, oh sorry, uh, that we don't have any results, but it tries to help me. Um, it's similar to like when you're, when you're I, don't, I don't know, like the 404 pages thing. I, I don't know if it's, if it's like a, a big thing to make your 404 page super pretty but super useless. Um, I don't know, but that's super annoying. Uh, I don't want to call out any specific websites, but yeah, that, that sucks. I don't know. You can at least like take the uh, last URL part or something and just automatically search for it if you have a search engine on your site and not say like, hey, why not search for it? Yeah, what else am I going to do? <laughs> so similar with that, like when there's a load more button, like on the end of a list, you just scroll down to the end of a list and there's a load more button. Yeah, what am I going to do? I pr I'm probably going to click it, right, if I'm at the end of the list. So just do it automatically. So um, yeah, most of the things boil down to just doing things automatically or just having good defaults uh, and just lifting the weight uh, for users. Uh, for instance, like um, one, another specific example is like um, we do an own cloud, this is the installation dialog. So you, I mean, of course, you need to put it on your server and stuff. Um, so it's, it's kind of like the, the um, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a package you put on your own server and then you can host your data and stuff. So um, kind of like wh how WordPress would be installed. And so the only fields you need to actually put in is an admin username and a password that you need to choose because we don't want to like give you a default uh, password and account uh, because then it would be like very easily hackable but um, then, then, then you can be done with it right and you, you um, uh, have advanced options though like below the fields you see advanced options so if you're like if you're feeling feeling lucky you can press that uh, and then you see some crazy advanced stuff like data folder like where where I'm, where should I put my data and then some crazy shit like database configuration. So I mean probably not crazy for you but like for normal people. Um, sorry. <laughs> so and then when you press that when you press my scale so it, it uses SQLite by default so it's also a technical decision um, because SQLite doesn't need to doesn't need any user input or, or uh, credentials input and uh, like I uh, I'm not a programmer, as I said, or, or I pretend to not be a programmer, and and I know the 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 moments when I needed to like connect to MySQL database, and I was like, how the hell does this work, and why is that even disconnected from that thing? And so SQLite is kind of awesome, and uh, that's why we use it by default. And um, even here, like for instance, localhost is prefilled. That's like basic stuff, uh, but there's lots of things who didn't do who doesn't. We don't do that. Yeah, lots of software. Yeah, so that's like the installation dialog. What else? Um, proximity is like, um, you know, like about um, Gestalt laws, uh, like the, the laws of, um, of design. And, and proximity is like one of the most important ones, I think, for interface design. It's like things which are close to each other uh, or which are closer to, to other things are perceived as um, uh, belonging together. So um, like here, like, I mean, that, that was the kind of the example before, like where the fields were grouped. Um, and there's also, of course, bad examples. Like here, for instance, um, it's like a, an image slideshow, and the close button, for instance, is is on the right, but it's the biggest button. And like, I just opened the image, and then the close button is the biggest button. Like, why did I go here in the first place? The play button and the left right button are super small, and they're not even like on the image or something. Um, and then similar. Um, this is actually kind of fun because this is German. Uh, so many of you can probably not read it, which kind of proves the point because like um, which of those buttons would you press, right? Would, would you press the right button or the left button, huh? Who of you would press the right button to, to like log in? And who would press the left button? Yeah, you lost. Because um, that's the cancel button. Um, 
I mean, because essentially this form looks like this for normal people, right? Um, and um, probably also to you who, who don't speak German. Uh, so, I mean, one thing would be to, to give it another color or make it bigger or whatever, but in the first place, you don't even need a cancel button on a login form. Like, cancel buttons are the, I don't know, the bane of my existence, I guess, and uh, of people's existence. So, like, just just don't do cancel buttons. It's crazy. Uh, like, sometimes, but not all the time. Uh, another thing, like the last thing, is uh, sorting. Um, because <clears throat> sorting kind of seems like, yeah, I'm just going to sort by, by like alphabetically, like I'm just going to go with like alphabetically. People know about the alphabet, right? So uh, it's cool if I just start at A, and it's going to be it's going to be great. Yeah, that's what the I, I'm kind of sorry that I'm uh, that I'm that I'm bashing iOS so much, but yeah, it's kind of shit. Um, so um, the problem here is um, also with proximity, or in in regards to proximity, like these people have nothing to do. With one another, like they're not even related in any way. Like the, the people under D, like I, I don't even know uh, what what possible correlation is between these people because they they got their names by mistake, so so to say. So why group them under one letter? So always group by relevance. Um, so two approaches to that would be um, I'm I'm nearly nearly done. Right? <laughs> Frequency and uh, recency. Uh, so uh, this is like a simple. Um, uh, Writer app. Uh, so there, I just um, I just sort the, the the documents on the left just by time. Like the most recent one is just up top. Simple, right? Um, so uh, and here, like in OwnCloud, it looks a bit more complicated. But here, I experimented with this nifty thing of like actually using color or like um, opacity of the of the text um, to uh, let you know, like uh, to give you visual cues about how recent it is. Like if you don't have it sorted by by modified date or by size, you see like, hey, this the 34 uh, megabyte thing is bigger than the other ones, or the seconds ago modified thing, or five days ago is probably more important than the one modified last year, which is directly below it by alphabet. Um, right, so there, there you also have like inherent favorites, like because your most important contacts are sorted up top, it's just like you open the contact app and everyone you care about is on the first screen or like one scroll away, and not like everyone who has an A in their name. I hate people with start with A. Anyway, so okay, one of some of my favorites. So I'm nearly done. Some of my favorites, favorite websites are um, this Ilizia.com, I think you pronounce it. He's blogging uh, on design, technology, and sociology. So also about like notifications and interruptions and stuff. Then there's IgnoreTheCode.net, um, also similar um, design and code. Um, and uh, yeah, Nielsen Norman Group. You probably know that uh, from Useit.com or. Um, Jacob Nielsen's alert box, which looked kind of ugly, but it doesn't exist anymore for some reason. It just redirects to this like better-looking page, I guess. Uh, but the the blog articles are really good, and that's also where I got the um, the 0.1 second, uh, one second, and 10 second thing from because they have an article on it. And uh, lastly, uh, I hope you had a real good time at the conference, uh, and uh, I I sure had. <laughs> And also an applause to, uh, yeah, all the organizers. And uh, yeah, thank you. And uh, we can talk later, or you can drop me an email, or whatever. Sorry for taking so long. <laughs> Thanks.